Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 14th lecture on economics, management and entrepreneurship. In the last class, we spoke about job costing. If you recall, in the job costing systems, the only one or a few jobs are manufactured and the few jobs are similar in nature. Thus, the job costing system there requires that to each job various direct costs and indirect costs are applied and then they are transferred to cost of goods sold when the items are sold. Today we are discussing about process costing. Process costing systems are applied to continuous production systems. Continuous production systems basically mean means that identical items are produced in large numbers. Now, we will find various examples of continuous production systems and it is interesting to see how costs are accounted for in production in continuous production systems in contrast to those in the job costing systems. First of all, what we mean by process costing? It applies to continuous production systems producing identical or nearly identical units. Examples are plenty chemicals, oil, plastics, rubber, glass, mining, cement and food processing. These are various examples. Now, in such systems production takes place through a series of processes. Processes are usually arranged in series but in some cases they may be also arranged in different configurations. Certain items may be done in parallel and later on they are assembled together in a serial fashion. So, that is a parallel series configuration. Now, here that is because of this sequential nature of processes costing requires recognition of work in process accounts one for each process. As goods move from one process to another, work in process costs are transferred gradually from one process to another. So, this is what we shall see in this flow diagram. Just as we had in the job costing system the direct labor, direct material and indirect cost. Similarly, also in process costing systems we have direct material, direct labor and indirect resource cost. Here those direct and indirect costs are applied to different processes, process 1, process 2, but unlike in job costing system the products move from process 1 to process 2 in a continuous production system. Therefore, the work in process cost is moved to work in process in process 2 before finally, after a series of such process transfers, the final product work in process 
or final product in uh, work in process and cost of goods sold are prepared. This you compare with the job costing system. This was for the job costing system here direct material, direct labor, indirect uh, resource cost. Now, these were applied to one job and they are also they were applied to a different job. So, the costs were shown in this fashion for every job. So, for every job we have a work in process and cost of goods sold. Similarly, for job 2 we had another. So, here directly all the direct and indirect costs were applied to the job and they were shown in this fashion. In contrast, in process costing, we have these costs applied to the to individual processes and then since the goods move from one process to another in a serial fashion, the costs also are transferred from the work in process account of one process to the work in process account of another process and finally, to the work in process account of the completed product. So, here we are assuming that the processes are in series. As before, the resources are, are applied not only to these processes, but to other processes as well. These are flow of our resources direct and indirect and these are the flow of costs. So, as items or goods are transferred from one process to another, costs are also transferred, they are credited here and debited to the account of WIP of the next process. Similarly, the when it is moving to the final product inventory, this becomes this is credited to the work in process account of process 2 and debited to the work in process of the final product. Now, we straight away take a simple example to start with and later on we shall give more realistic example. Here we are assuming that there are only two processes in a continuous production system, cooking of an item and then freezing it for future use. So, when the items are cooked they are transferred to the freezing department. The costs of cooking department are transferred to the freezing department as well when the goods are transferred. So, here we are assuming that the cost allocation base or cost driver is amount of cooked food that is in kilogram. The cost driver unit that, that is the rate at which the cost driver will be calculated is accumulated cost in the cooking department division of quantity of cooked food in kilogram. This ratio gives rupees per kilogram as the cost driver unit. So, as the items are cooked in the cooking department and are transferred to the freezing department the costs are also similarly transferred and the amount transferred is the cost driver unit that is the amount of that is rupees per kilogram of cooked food that is the unit cost of cooked food being transferred multiplied by the quantity of cooked food physically transferred to the freezing department. So, this is quite a simple example of how costs are transferred. This if we write the T accounts for cooking work in process and freezing work in process. So, on the debit side we have direct material 14 okay, 14000 uh, rupees 
direct labor 4 or 4000, factory overhead 8, so totaling 26. Now, actually less um, uh, quantity of goods were transferred, so let it be 24000. So, this 24 comes as debit amount to the work in process in the freezing, freezing department, the remaining inventory lying in the cooking department that is not transferred to the freezing department is rupees 2000. Now, in the freezing department it has its own direct labor and in this case there is no direct material that is the cost transferred from the cooking department which is 24000 direct labor we are assuming 1000 and there is a factory overhead as 2000 totaling 27000. Now, if not the full amount is sold only to the extent of 25000 is sold out then the ending inventory in the freezing department is 27 minus 25 equal to 2000. So, this is a simple example and these are the T accounts for the two departments. These are the journal entries, they are very simple. All the items that are mentioned here 14, 4 and 8 and this side 24, 1 and 2. So, 14, 4 and 8. So, they are debited to the cooking department and of course, they are credited to the inventory, direct material inventory. Suppose, we saw also the T account for direct material inventory, then we would credit that amount because that is then gets transferred to the work in process account of the cooking department. Similarly, for uh, labor it is 4000 or 4 and that is credited to the accrued payroll. Similarly, for factory overhead. So, just as we are putting the debit amount in the work in process account, similarly we will have to put the credit amounts in the respective accounts. Then, 24,000 rupees worth of goods are transferred to the freezing department. So, the freezing department WIP is debited, the cooking department's WIP is credited. That is already we have shown it here, 24 is credited here and 24 is debited here. The general entry is like that and similarly for, similarly for freezing department similar to the cooking department we also have direct labor, factory overhead, they are charged to work in process in the freezing department, but they are credited to their, their respective accounts. And finally, these are this is the amount sold out. So, accordingly the WIP reduces by 25 and finished goods inventory increases by 25. So, these are the journal entries. We have of course, not shown the finished goods inventory in our earlier slide. We just wrote transferred cost of goods completed to finished goods. So, this is a simple example. Now, take a little more complicated example, where we are considering that items in the first process are not completely made and are not completely transferred to the next process, they are some are semi finished or semi processed. So, when certain items are semi processed and are therefore, not transferred to the next process, the question is how to account for such transfer, because the items that are semi processed they have consumed the direct material, but they have not fully the factory overhead expenses or labor charges were not fully applied to them. So, this is the case that we shall study in this particular example. Here we are considering 
a toy manufacturing company that produces only one type of toy in large number. Therefore, it is something like a continuous production or a mass production system. One type of toy being manufactured by the company. For simplicity, we are assuming that the toy is processed in two departments. One the forming department and two the finishing department. We will consider two months April and May. We are assuming that to start with in April there is no work outstanding either in the forming or in the finishing department. So, work started in April first in the forming department for 25,000 toys. But at the end of April only 20,000 units were completed. Therefore, 5000 units were semi processed and it is assumed that only 25 percent of the processing work could be done on the remaining 5000 units. That means, only after some more processing to the extent of 75 percent these 5000 units would be considered to have completed and then they could be transferred to finishing, but 75 percent work remains to be done. So, only 25 percent processing work was done on the remaining 5000 units. That is these 5000 units received only 25 percent of the conversion resources. By conversion resources we mean all the resources that are required apart from direct material. That means, the direct labor and other overhead charges put together is called the conversion cost or the conversion resources and their cost is called conversion cost. So, if this is the situation then the question is how should the forming department calculate the cost of goods transfer and the cost of goods remaining in its own department as work in process. This is the question and this work is for April. Let us see how we go about it. First of all we collected the data, we found out that the direct material that was requisitioned and used in the forming department for the 25000 toys cost rupees 70,000 and that in the forming department in April direct labor charges were 10,625 rupees, factory overhead was rupees 31,875 together they came to 42,500 rupees. The conversion cost was were 42,500 rupees and therefore, the total cost in April that occurred in the forming department and which has to be accounted for is the sum of the direct material cost and the conversion cost that came to 112,500 rupees. So, up to this there is no problem. Now, to account for this 112,500 rupees, we normally consider 5 steps in process costing and they are the following. First of all, summarize the flow of physical units, calculate in terms of equivalent units, we will, we have defined equivalent units are the number of completed units that could have been produced from the inputs applied, could have been completed units. Actually, the completed units are 20,000, but the remaining 5,000 units are in semi finished or semi completed stage to the extent of 25 percent. So, we will consider this and find out the equivalent units. 
summarize the total costs to account for, calculate the unit costs and apply the costs to units completed and to units in the ending work in process. Now, let us apply each one of these steps to finally, know how the costs are applied to the completed units and to the work in process. First of all, step 1 says summarize the flow of physical units. It is very simple, the completed number of toys in the farming department, if this is all about farming department is 20,000 units. Uh, this off is meaningless. and partially completed units are 5000 totaling 25000 for which the work started but these 5000 units have received on an average 25% of the conversion resources knowing this we calculate the output in terms of the equivalent units so the completed units are 20000 so we write that as it is and then we say that 25 percent of 5000 which is this multiplied by this which is equal to 1250 this should be added to 20000. So, the equivalent amount of units that have received the complete uh, direct material and conversion costs are 21250 units. Now, but let us understand that direct material was received by all the 25,000 units because material has been issued to the farming department, but the labor charges were not fully applied. So, the conversion resources were received by only the equivalent number which is 21,250 equivalent units. The direct material was received by all the 25,000 units whereas, only 21,250 equivalent units received the conversion resources of labor and other power and other resources, indirect resources. Once we know this, we can then go for farming departments month ended April 30th. Now, this is this writes down step 3. 4 and 5, 5 of course is quite big, 3 and 4 not so difficult. So, here we are writing the details of the total cost. If you remember the direct material cost used in the farming department was 70,000 and all the conversion costs put together is 42,500. Let us see that this one the direct material cost in the farming department was 70,000 and the conversion cost was 42,500. Total cost to account for was 112500. So, that is what is shown here. Direct material 70,000, conversion cost 42,500, total cost is 112500. Now, from this figure, and from the knowledge of how, how many units received the direct material cost, direct material cost was received by all the 25,000. Therefore, unit cost for as far as the direct material is concerned is 70,000 divided by 25,000. We have given two asterisks, these are the footnotes 70,000 divided by 25,000. So, this divided by this gives me this divided by 25,000 gives me the unit cost as far as the direct material is concerned. Unit direct material cost is rupees 2.80 per unit. Similarly, conversion cost recall that conversion cost is applied only to 21,250 this is the equivalent number of units which we calculated in this slide. 
equivalent number of units that received the conversion resources, where all the items that were transferred and 25 percent of the remaining items and that gave a sum of 21,250 units. So, we divide that to get the unit cost that is cost of conversion resources that was consumed by one equivalent unit. Adding it up, we get this as 4.80, which is also this divided by 25,000. That is what is written here. So, this is the cost to account for and this step 4 is find out the unit cost by considering the equivalent units. Now, we apply the cost finally, to apply the costs there are two items, one two units that are completed and transferred to finishing department and the other is units not completed that remains with the forming department. Now, here we write is very simple of the completed item it is 4 rupees 80 paise and 20,000 units were completed. Therefore, the amount transferred is 20,000 multiplication 4.80 which is 96,000 rupees. So, this is quite straightforward, but the units that remained. So, how many remain 25,000 minus 20,000 is 5,000 and at the rate of 2.80 the direct material has been consumed. So, 5000 multiplied by 2.80 that gives 14000 as the units not completed consuming direct material. So, 2.8 multiplication 5000 remaining items and as far as the conversion cost is concerned we know that there are 5000 items remaining but they received on an average 25 percent of the conversion was only done. So, equivalent unit is 1250 and at the rate of 2 rupees the conversion cost was consumed and therefore, the product of these two gave us the conversion cost for the items that are not completed remains in WIP as 2500. When we sum up it gives us 16500. So, the two costs are one transfer to the finishing department, the cost is 96000, the one that remains as WIP in the forming department is 16500. So, together they add up to 112500 and incidentally this was the cost to account for and now we have actually accounted for that. So, what will happen this amount will be therefore, credited to the finishing department this amount will remain in the forming department. So, I think this slide has been fully explained. The journal entries would now be in this form the direct material 70,000 and the inventory account is credited because from the inventory the amount this inventory was brought to the forming department. The labor charges and the overhead charges in the forming department where look at the here the direct labor charges and the factory overhead cost in the forming department in April were 10,625 and 31,875. That is what we have written down here. They are debited to the work in process account of the forming department, but credited to the direct labor and factory overhead accounts. Finally, we have calculated this 96000 rupees 
as the cost of goods 20,000 units that are transferred to the finishing department. So, 96,000 rupees will be going as will be debited to the WIP of finishing department, but credited to the WIP of forming department. So, I think this part is also a fully explained. Now, naturally we can write the work in process of the forming account forming department and direct material is 70,000 direct labor is 10,625 factory overhead is this costs to account for was 112500 transferred out to finishing department was 96,000 what remains in balance for the work in process in the forming department at the end of April is 16,500. This is the T account work in process of the forming department. Now, consider May. Recall that in April there was no inventory, no work in process in the forming department there was no work in process, but at the end of April there is a work in process now available to the extent of 16,500 rupees or in terms of units 5000 units which were semi finished and they are retained in the forming department because the work was not complete therefore, they could not be transferred to the finishing department and now May has started. Therefore, the April end in, uh, inventory in the forming department becomes the May beginning inventory in the same department. Now, the situation is a little different from what we had or what we had done in April to this extent. The presence of WIP or inventory in the forming department, not inventory. Uh, work in process because the items 5000 items were in semi finished condition. That is what we are writing here. Consider the production of forming department in May. Recall that the company had a May beginning inventory, April end is May beginning. The company had a May beginning inventory of 5000 units. It started production in May it started production on 26,000 items. So, this is a new information it had 5000 it started production on 26,000 items, but at the end of May it could only complete production and transfer of 24,000 items to the finishing department. So, 5000 plus 26,000 31,000 were being processed in May of which 24,000 items were completed and 7,000 items remained as work in process. And it is estimated that on an average each of these items that remained with the forming department received only 60 percent of the conversion resources. In April the 5,000 items had received 25 percent of the conversion resources, but in May it is estimated that much more work has been done, but there are 7000 items that could not be completed. They received on an average 60 percent of the conversion resources. Now, the question is how should the forming department calculate the cost of goods transfer and the cost of goods remaining as work in process. The situation is little different from that in April in the sense that now there is a beginning inventory or work in process of 5000 units. So, I, I in fact, I should say this as work in process and not inventory this should be called work in process. Yes.
So, this also should be work in process. Now, here we have to consider the effect of the beginning inventory in May. The company had a May beginning work in process of 5000 units. Now, as before the 5 steps are to be applied. First step is summarize the flow of physical units, completed number 24000, partially completed items are 7000 units on an average that have received 60 percent of the conversion resources. 7000 comes because 5000 units were there, 26000 units production started, 24000 units production completed and transferred. 7000 remains with uh, the forming department. Now, as before we calculate the equivalent units, it is 24000 equivalent units completed. So, 6000 into 60 percent Oh, there is a mistake here, this should be 7000, because 7000 units are in a semi finished stage receiving 60 percent conversion resources. Therefore, 7000 multiplied by 0 0.6 is 4200 and when added to 24000 that have been completed and transferred the sum becomes 28200 units. Now, as we had done in the case of April, direct material was received by all the 31000 units, whereas the conversion resources have been received by only 28200 units, 200 equivalent units, equivalent completed units. So, keeping this in mind, we now proceed in May the following costs were incurred by the forming department. Now, we consider all the cost aspect in May in the forming department. Direct material consumed was 82,100 and the conversion costs were direct labor was this much, factory overhead was this much, totaling this much and the May manufacturing cost was the direct material plus the conversion cost added together was 138,820 rupees. So, the costs to account for now is this is the fresh cost May cost and this was the work in process that remained in April at the end of April. So, April's outstanding cost of WIP and the new cost in May in the form of direct material and conversion which was 138,820 together is the cost that will have to be accounted for. Accounted for means how much of this is transferred to the finishing department and how much remains with as WIP in the forming department at the end of May. This will now have to be done. So, inventory in the forming department consists of instead of inventory let us call it work in process. In the forming department consists of items produced in April and those produced in May. The unit costs of manufacture of items made in April are different from those in May. How to account for uh, well, not inventory again, it is WIP. Now, there are two methods that are used. 
weighted average method and first in first out method. We shall be discussing weighted average method because of its simplicity and because it is highly popular. The FIFO or the first in first out method is more complicated and is not preferred in practice. Now, let us study what this weighted average method means. First of all, let us understand that this is April and this is there is certain amount of direct material used in April and certain amount of direct material used in May. Therefore, what we have to found, find is the total amount spent in direct material in May and in April end inventory that is remaining amount 5000 and total amount total quantity if we divide that is the rupees per unit cost of direct material. So, we had 5000 units and the direct material cost was 14000 associated with 5000 and now 26000 items were, uh, were started production and they received 82000 as direct material cost. Now, let us look at this figure. The costs in the month of May that were incurred by the farming department uh, were as follows. The direct material cost was rupees 82100 direct labor was 14,560, factory overhead was 42,160. So, totaling the conversion cost was 56,720. The May manufacturing cost was the sum of these two which came to 138,820 rupees. Now, the costs to account for will then be not only the May cost which was incurred which is 138,820 rupees, but also the work in process of April in the farming department which was 16,500 rupees. So, this totals to 155,320 rupees. Recall that this 16,500 was the work in process in the farming department in the beginning of May, the end of April. This you can see this 16,500 was the work in process uh, conversion cost the direct material was 14000 and the conversion cost was 2500 at the end of april which is same also as in the beginning of may now work in process in the farming department consists of items produced in april and those produced in May. The unit costs in April and May are different. The question then is how to account for work in process in such a situation. There are two methods, one is weighted average method, the other is first in first out which is also called FIFO method, first in first out FIFO method. As we shall see, the weighted average method is simpler, requiring less number of computations. First in, first out method requires more computation and is not preferred in practice. Therefore, we shall cover only the weighted average method in our presentation here. First of all, let us understand that for direct material the cost was 14000 at the work in process for april and conversion cost for april 
was 2500 totaling 16500 <clears throat> now they are separately accounted for 5000 items had 14000 rupees direct material cost 26000 items produced in may the direct material cost was 82100 therefore the unit cost in an weighted average method would be this plus this divided by this plus this april end inventory plus may direct material cost these two added in the uh, will be in the numerator and the actual amount in units will be in the denominator so the unit of measure here becomes rupees per unit and that comes to 3 rupees 10 paise for conversion resources we had equivalent number of units that received conversion was 28200 and in may the conversion cost was 56720 rupees and in april the work in process that remained in the inventory in the farming department was 2500 so this was in the numerator and this was in the denominator giving a unit cost for conversion as rupees 2 and 10 paise therefore the total cost total unit cost became 5 rupees 20 paise now we followed step 3 4 and 5 exactly in the same way as we did in the month of april here for work in process in april end the direct material was 14000 and conversion cost was 2500 totaling 16500 costs added in may for direct material it was 82100 and conversion cost was 56720 added up it gave 128820 rupees costs to account for is therefore this plus this is 155320 and direct material cost was 96100 and conversion cost was 59220 now already we have found out the equivalent units for direct material all the items have received the direct material but conversion cost the equivalent cost is equivalent uh, number of units is 28200 therefore the unit cost is already we have calculated this by this is 310 this by this is 2.10 totaling 5.20 now this cost has to be applied to those who have completed their production and they have been transferred to the finishing department and those that remained as WIP in farming department. Now, uh, we know that for those who have completed their cost the unit cost is 5 rupees 20 paise and 24,000 units have been produced and transferred in May to the finishing department therefore the product of this will be the cost that will be debited to the finishing department and credited to the WIP of the farming department at the end of May. As far as the work in process in May is concerned for the farming department we now have 7000 items still left in the semi finished stage in the farming department each costing 3 rupees 10 paise therefore 7000 into 3 rupees 10 paise gives us 21700 rupees the conversion cost conversion cost is rupees 2.10 for equivalent number of unit produced and the conversion cost becomes uh, 4200 that is this is coming as 7000 items that remain at a 60 percent completion stage. So, 7000 into 0 0.6 is 4200 equivalent units multiplication 2.10 that gives us 8820 
as the conversion cost of the items remaining as WIP in the farming department together the total work in process is 30,520 and the total cost then accounted for was 124,800 plus 30,520 and summing up we get this as 155,320 rupees. So, the cost to accounted for has been accounted for in this manner that is the cost that is transferred to the finishing department or charged to the finishing department is 124,800 and charged to the work in process account is 30,520. Uh, and uh, first in first out method it distinguishes the current work done from the previous work done on the beginning inventory of work in process. Here the equivalent units is calculated on the basis of work done in the current period that is the equivalent units are for direct material it is 26,000 units whereas for conversion it is 26,950 units. It involves more computation compared to the weighted average method that is why it is almost never used in practice. So, to sum up we say that unlike in job costing in process costing the jobs are transferred from one process to another and therefore, costs are also transferred accordingly and finally, it get transfer, transferred to the product finished product inventory the final product or finished product inventory. The problem arises because there can be certain items that remain in a semi finished stage in the predecessor process and therefore, we have to estimate the amount that should be debited to such a work in process in the predecessor process. There are two methods one is weighted average method the other is first in first out method. First in first out method is more complicated and is rarely followed in practice therefore, we cover only the weighted average method. Here when the goods are transferred from the in this particular example when the goods were transferred from, from the forming department to the finishing department. We assumed that the that uh, we, we took that the certain work in process remained and therefore, from one period to another period when the inventory is, uh, is uh, transferred then in that case costs are also accordingly transferred. We will take up this in our next lecture.